Hi. You can't even imagine how infuriating it must be to book me. Because they, you know, we had a meeting and they're like, oh, well, what are you going to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It changes. This is the state of, of, um, of this kind of uh, exploration with this system. This system is something that I've been working on for a couple of years. I've been doing a lot of stuff over the last few years. But at first, the whole purpose was to have something that was like a wind controller, which is a digital version of a saxophone, right? So you play it like this. But I wanted something where I could do my hands like this, right? And at the time, that was what I wanted. That was what I thought uh, would be the pinnacle of uh, what I could create musically. But then over time, it stopped being about the music. Oh, there it is. It stopped being about music. It became about expression. And expression are vectors that go out in their own directions depending on how you interact with it. For instance, I take off my shoes because at the time that I started doing this, it just felt more comfortable. I didn't understand why, I just did it anyway. But then I realized that that's an expression vector that has no interface yet. That's uh, one of the things I'm working on right now. This is one of them. And this expression vector, this is just part of it. This isn't my whole foot. My foot doesn't look like this. Yeah. But uh, this expression vector is actually two, part, uh, two parts. One is the actual movement that will uh, that will go along with it to control parameters. And the fact that I have a 3D printer at home and I just got this wonderful elastic material that I didn't even know existed eight months ago, and I'm able to create very strong interfaces with it. So right now, it's another part of the expression, which is iteration. Everything gets iterated. When I, when I did my, um, when I did my first... Um, I had my first TED experience. I won't say I did a TED talk because that's like official. That's like, you know, Monterey or whatever. Uh, I had cardboard uh, and a mouthpiece made of guitar picks and glue. And uh, it didn't work very well. Who knows? It might not work very well today. That's just part of the game, isn't it? But um, I was able, to, but I was able to, to, to get the point across, but then afterwards, as soon as that show was over, I was like, oh, I really need to fix this thing. So my impression of myself was that I was going to go, I was going to make this thing, and I was going to go out, and I was going to go start street performing again, I'm going to start doing all this other stuff. But first, uh, let me fix this one thing. Let me change this little thing. Let me do this thing. And so... I ended up spending, or ended up, end up spending most of my time creating it, and I have these wonderful opportunities to play it. Hey, so the latest iterations. One is this. This is the new head prosthesis that I've been working on. The first one, like I said, was guitar picks and glue and an electric junction box with a really not right pressure sensor in it, and it worked vaguely. And then over time, I was like, okay, let me change, blah, blah, blah. And so now, this is the third version. This one has, I showed this last month, and it kind of freaked them out because right before, when I was doing the sound check, it caught on fire. So I'm, I'm not going to use it, but these are electrodes for transcranial direct current stimulation. I figure that in this mode, this this expression mode where the expression is actually the music, it's actually the creation of it, all of these things combine together in a way that I'm not used to. So this will be a way to kind of like, and I've done it before. I did it at uh, an event I did last, uh, thing I did last year, but I didn't have the protocol in place, a transcranial direct current stimulation protocol. I didn't have that in place, and I ended up giving myself a very serious chemical burn, so I'm going to refrain from using it until I've got everything right. Now, the reason why I'm explaining all of this to you is because it's actually another expression vector. Explaining how this works, because 
you do get, to chan you do get a chance to see it on, the, on, this, uh, on this wonderfully large screen, and that's very high resolution. That looks better than my laptop. But, uh, <laughs> but it does give you a chance to kind of see exactly what's happening because uh, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm talking for myself when I say this. If I see something that looks like it's a little bit too clever, I'm like, I'm looking and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I can follow what you're doing. So that's the reason why the talking part is one of the expression vectors. Now, I'll give you a brief run of what this does. The mouthpiece has a pressure sensor. When I blow, and when I inhale, oops, hmm, shouldn't do that too often. Uh, I have a mic that I'm supposed to have in here, but I'm still building the new one for this new system, so I have to use a regular mic until later on in the week. When I go into the edit mode, you see these lights here? I see them. You can see a vague outline of them, but I see them, and while I'm playing, I'm like, oh, am I in a record mode, which would be this red light there, red light here. Am I in a record mode? Am I in a, uh, turn the volume up. Am I in a record mode? Am I in a mute mode? These types of things. So that I have, this was going to be a heads-up display, but I decided mm, I'm not going to do that. So each one, I put it into the record mode. I pick a sound. I push a bunch of buttons because I'm still working on it. Now, let's close this. Now, these are the sounds, and I'm going to play something in a second, but I want to let you know what you're hearing. Now, uh, I've added a couple of new things that you might find interesting. Uh, one, I've been working uh, on using um, a binaural type of panning. I want it to sound like the sound is somewhere here or, you know, somewhere around the room, not just here or here. So at first, I was going through all of these binaural uh, pre made things, and then I realized that since I have the gestures of the accelerometer on each hand, I can always just place the sound. It's not quite binaural because it's on speakers. If you hear it in headphones, it's really freaky. And the second thing that I, that I want to share it's, uh, is I've been working on a way of creating chords. Usually when you play monophonically, like this, you can't play chords. Now I can play them like this, it's, wind it's Windows, so. This is my latest fixation. Every time I'm working on something new, I put it up on my desktop. So right now, it's orthopedics, for the, so just so you know. Let's see if this works. So the, the, uh, the chord changes themselves are based on my hand positions. but then I can also play chords just down the scale. Right? All right, so with that, I'm gonna play a little bit.
And if it crackles, well, it just crackles. That's just the way it goes with when you're making stuff, so. And that happens when you make your own stuff. The main point being, uh, there we go. The main point being that even now, before I came here today, in fact, between the time of the sound check and right now, I went home and changed some stuff. I really did. It's all I think about 24 hours a day. This is, for me, indicative of the world that we're coming into now. I cannot rest on what happened two years ago that uh, has kind of allowed more people to be interested in this project than just me. Now, we have this growing internet social phenomenon, this, this TED uh, concept, these social networks, and sharing um, information seems to be 
increasing really fast. And so now I try to see how this contextualizes how I see what's coming. And what I see of what's coming is that we have the possibility. There's a lot of musicians, for instance, who kind of um, dismissed the Arduinos as a professional platform because of, because of just right now, just like that. But uh, also because they didn't think that it would be able to keep up with what they were playing. And a lot of those people uh, that, have, that email me are now saying, oh, I see that you're able to actually you know, play certain things in a way that I'm familiar with. Maybe I'll investigate it. And I've seen some of these projects, and these projects, some of them are very, very sophisticated. So now it's um, the, the music aspect is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a, a musical system, but with the addition of, the, uh, of uh, a lot of the 3D printing, the robotics, and all of these things, uh, it's becoming something that kind of allows me to express myself better as we go forward. Okay, so I got two and a half minutes. Let me play something real quick. Thank <laughs> you. 